What's going on guys? This is going to be a quick video inside of Affinity Publisher talking about templates and how to create them and also why you may want to use them. So if you take a look at the screen in front of us, you can see that I've got one of my projects open and this right here is my Christmas planner. If you guys are looking for a Christmas planner, you can find this on my Etsy page and I'll leave a link in the description. You can also find all of the other planners I've created there. So first of all, if you pay attention to the design, you can see that I've set up my margins just to ensure that all of my content stays within a certain boundary of the document. And what this is gonna allow me to do is make sure that nothing is cut off when I go ahead and print this. So by default, everybody's printer is gonna have a minimum margin as to how close to the edge of the paper you can get before some of your content will get cut off while printing. And in most cases, you can find those minimum margins inside of the manual or maybe just by looking on the internet. So what we're going to do first of all is I'll go ahead and just delete all of this content so we can see what we've got. So I've set up my margins here to make sure I have room at the top, the bottom and the sides as well as in the middle to make sure nothing gets cut off. And I use this exact same template across all of my journals that I create as this project right here is set up perfectly specifically for my printer as well as my binding machine. So I know that once I go ahead and I punch the holes on the edge of this paper right here in the center, I've left enough room with my margins to make sure that nothing gets cut off with the holes. So that is gonna be another reason why you wanna go ahead and set up any templates. If you plan on making the same kind of journal formatting across any of your designs, just so you know, once you start, when you go ahead and print, you're gonna have no problems with binding any of this. And another reason you may want to use templates is if you have specific guides in place for your designs if you plan on making the same kind of projects. So what I mean by that is if I go over to the left hand side inside of my other project, right here I've got one of my wedding invitations that I've created. And the idea of this is that it folds over into four sections. So if I go ahead and I just turn on my preview mode, you can see how this is all put together. So what I need to do first of all is I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of this content. And now we can see what we've got. So I've got my margins on the top, the sides as well as the bottom, but you'll see I have these guides right here throughout the document, which is gonna be individually spaced. So I know that I've got all the same size on this top piece, the one underneath, as well as the other two at the bottom. And this is gonna act really as telling me as to where this is gonna fold over. So once again, this is another template right here that I would save personally. And the way that you go ahead and create guides is by simply just getting your ruler and just dragging these out and dropping them from either the left or as well as the top. So I don't currently have any of these wedding invitations printed to show you guys what they look like once you go ahead and print them and fold them into a card. However, I'll see if I can find some mock-up images on my computer just to give you guys a rough idea what these do look like. These are a really good thing to create if you want to go ahead and give them out for a friend's wedding or maybe use them for your wedding. But moving on with the tutorial, I'll go ahead and show you how to set up these templates. So we're going to make our way over to the left hand side inside of our file menu. We're going to go down to new. Then we're going to be inside of our startup menu, which you will find when you open up Affinity Publisher. So what we're going to do first of all is initially set up our document for any other projects that we're going to create similar in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the press ready. I'm going to choose A5. Then inside of my A5 menu, I want to make sure that I have my DPI set to 300 as that is going to give you the best printing quality as well as that if you guys do plan on printing your designs make sure that you are inside of cmyk what we're going to do next is go inside of our margins tab and we'll go ahead and set up the margins so for my specific printer i know that my outer margins for instance which are the ones that are going to be on the left and the right have a minimum of three millimeter however i like to use five millimeter just to make sure i've got a little bit more safe space zone so i'll do that on one side as well as on the top because they're about the same size then at the bottom that is about five millimeter but i like to add that as seven then on my inner, which is going to be where the binding holes would be, I'm going to make that around 10 millimeter just to make sure that I've got room for all of my content and my holes without anything being cut off. So that's all we need to do for the moment. So we'll go ahead and just create the project. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come up to our master pages and we'll just double tap on here. 
and we'll go and toggle our preview mode so we can see our margins so right now this is all we have to do if you guys don't want to use any guides this is going to be your future template for any other projects that you're going to make that require the same specifications so if you do want to use guides like i said you just got to use your ruler right here at the top drag that down into place as well as the one over on the left hand side however i'll go ahead and just delete those for a moment so now we've got this set up how we're going to want it for any future journals that we create all we've got to do is go up to file we're going to make our way down towards the bottom to where it says export as template inside of here we need to navigate to where you would like to save this on your computer for me i'll go to desktop then we're going to have to create ourselves a new folder so i'll go down here to new folder give this a name we'll just call this templates but of course you guys may want to write in affinity publisher templates if you plan on keeping these on your computer so once you've named your folder go ahead and hit create then we need to give our file a name then it's just a case of going ahead and hitting save and now that is all we have to do so if we now go ahead and we want to use a template all we've got to do is go back up to file we're going to go to new then we're going to make our way down to where we have the templates tab over here on the left hand side inside of here what we need to do is go down towards the bottom to where we have this button that says add template folder once you go ahead and select that that's now going to navigate to where your template folder should be saved for me it's going to be on my desktop so i need to go there first then i need to grab that folder go ahead and hit choose and then that is now loaded inside affinity so once i go ahead and i open up that a5 journal and now you can see that we have the exact same specifications that we have on the other document where we created ourselves a template so we don't have any guides available on this because we did go ahead and delete those however if you did use any guides they would also be visible on your document and don't forget you can use as many guides as you like you can drag these in and just make any kind of shapes that you want maybe specifically you want a logo in a certain area of your document such as this square right here this is a good reason to use guides so i know i've kept this pretty basic just by using margins and guides however it's worth noting that you can also use shapes or images or text inside of your templates as a matter of fact you can create yourself a whole project and save it as a template if you want to just build off that every single time you open it and just change some of the content it's entirely up to you what you want to use inside of your templates i know this hasn't been the most amazing video but i hope you've learned something new if you did then please go ahead and hit that like button as that really helps me out with the youtube algorithm and helps other people find my content and if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button also if you want to learn anything specific then go ahead and let me know in the comments and i'll try my best to make a video on that subject but for now i hope you have a great day and i will see you in the next video